So, how do ice skates work? Why does that matter? They create a thin layer of water. They melt it. The snowboards do too, and that's what they're actually gliding over. Okay. So let's talk about that. Because it's, it's actually very specific types of water that they're actually creating. All right? So I've t if I take, what, well, you surprised by this? <laughs> so, so if, uh, if I, if I, so wh why, why would we use a blade on the ice? Why not just, you know, make a block and, and why doesn't it slide as well as the blade does? Because the blade focuses the pressure into a very, very narrow area on the ice. And so one of the cool things about, about uh, ice is it's, it's, it's the structure, right? We're talking about how it's got this compressed structure. All the molecules kind of stick together, and that's what makes it a solid. So what I have to do is I have to figure out a way to turn this solid into, into something that's really, really slick so I can slide across it. So we have a very narrow blade that, that pushes... Um, down on the ice. But if we put pressure on ice, what happens is, is we create a layer of positively charged water on top. Well, here's the really cool thing about positively charged water. It's slippery. It's slipperier than just regular water, right? So it takes pressure to do that, to, to bring it out of the ice. But again, so this slickness is going to come into play when we start talking about joints. Okay, so, so now we're going to talk about joints. And, and this, is, this, is, this is important because we're going we're gonna to use this representation of this joint at different places all over the body. And you'll see how this representation is just repeated over and over and over again in, in many different ways. So, so this would represent a synovial joint, and a synovial joint has synovial fluid in it. Okay, and synovial fluid is hydrogen water. It's mostly water. Okay. Is it three? Is it three hydrogen water? Hang on. Hey. <laughs> so, on the ends of your bones is hyaline cartilage, and and cartilage is primarily the same structure as a gel. So. The, the, the synovial fluid inside the joint is mostly water. So when the synovial fluid is up against the joint surfaces, these are negative charges here, okay? So we have negatively charged water, so that's the exclusion zone of water that's, that's on either end. And so if, if the exclusion zone is, is surrounding the gel, then we know that the middle part is our positively charged water, right? So what that means is, is that I have a slick surface between the two ends of bones. So they never really come together, but I have this slicker water in between. So, so my, it allows my joint surfaces to move back and forth without friction, so there's no wear and tear on the ends of the bones. Now there's a problem with this, is that I need something to contain that, right? And so we have the synovial membrane that surrounds the joint. And so the synovial membrane actually produces some of the, the synovial fluid. It's, it's, a, it's a byproduct of the, the type of structure of the connective tissue. And, and so it helps produce this. And so what the, um, the synovial fluid also kicks out some proteins, right, throughout this. And so we get these little exclusion zones around the proteins as well. So you have negatively charged water that surrounds the proteins. And on the outside of that, of that is also the positively charged water. So, so we have a tremendous amount of positively charged water in here. And so then that's what allows joints to move in this friction. That's why they don't squeak when, when joints move is because they have this in between them. The cool thing is, so let's go back to the ice skating example. Why did I bring that up? Well, pressure enhances this effect, right? So I can squeeze this together and they never actually touch. So Kyle, when you were talking about Don Tigney's 
reference to the fact that, that the sacrum actually kind of floats in the joint, that's literally what's happening. So I can still have compression, which provides stability to every joint, but they don't have to touch. It's not necessarily form closure. It's going to be compression. So, so yeah, so, so when, when they say form closure, they're, they're, they're looking at this sort of lock and key mechanism of the joint surfaces being congruent with one another, but they're never actually touching. Think about this. If, I've, if I have this thing full of positive charges, don't positive charges repel one another? It kind of makes sense, right? So if I have negatively charged water on this side, negatively charged water on this side, and I've got positively charged water on either side of those negative charges, I actually have repellent forces that keep the joint surfaces apart too. So I've got this, this slick surface that I've created with positively charged water. I've got positive charges that push each other away because I've got negatively charged water that's associated with the exclusion zone that surrounds the gel. I've got my little synovial joint right here that keeps this nice and contained. As long as everything's intact, i got a nice healthy movable joint.